Disco Elysium is one of my favorite games of 2019 and it made me think a lot. Not in a way of how to solve the puzzle or how to get the best outcome in dialogue, but literally about everything. About life, about politics, about disco, you know, everything. It's probably the most solid recommendation that I can give. If you love story-driven games, you should stop listening to me and go buy it right now. You may ask if I enjoyed Discalism that much, then why there is a word flawed in the title of this review? Well, where should I start? Uh, let's say it's really noticeable that this game was made by professional writers and not professional game developers. It has an absolutely amazing storyline with well-written characters and a unique world. This is a detective story about the cop who got drunk to the point that he lost all his memories. So during the game he's not just trying to solve the murder, but also recollecting the memories about his past. Discoalism is a role-playing game at its finest. You can be whatever cop you want to be, and skills is one of the things that helps you to sculpt your character. And here lies one of the biggest twists. In this game, skills are not just numbers that determine the chance of passing dialogue checks. In Discoalism, skills literally have their own personalities, giving you suggestions and even arguing between each other. So it's not just Kim Kitsuragi who helps you in solving the case, but but also 24 other party members in your protagonist's head. This alone should tell you enough about how weird and unique this game is. There's a lot of text in Disco Elysium, and it's so complex and dense with detail that you might feel overwhelmed by it. Considering that currently the game is available only in English and simplified Chinese, it's going to be a great test for your language skills. But if you do know English on a good level, then you are in for a treat. I prefer to play games in short sessions, but in case of Disco Elysium, I often played it for two and even more hours straight, because of how sublime and immersive writing in this game. Disco Elysium is one of the few games in which I almost never felt a desire to skip through the dialogue, it's just a pure joy to read. Thankfully, even though there's a day-night cycle, the time progresses only when you select the next dialogue option, so you can read all this text without any rush. Honestly, I wish I could be as good with words as Discoalism writers. It's my personal goal to be able to create something as engaging and captivating as the story in this game. Um... No, I don't think so. We are not the fashion police. We're the real police. But while pushing the boundaries in narrative design, Discoalism makes the same old mistakes that were made by countless other RPG games. My biggest disappointment about this game is the fact that you can repeat some unnecessary dialogues over and over again. I never understand the point of those grayed out dialogues options in other games, but they were not that big of an issue because writing in most of those titles wasn't really good. But for the game where narrative plays such a huge role, in Disco Elysium this is just straight up ruins the immersion. No real human will repeat himself over and over again while answering exactly the same question. It's especially weird that sometimes the game even allows you to try every available dialogue choice and see different reactions. Stuff like this just breaks the illusion and shows that your choice doesn't really matter in most cases. Developers created an amazing story and the world, but they've built it around the ancient gameplay design patterns and didn't go far enough in breaking the rules. To be fair, I can't say that Disco Elysium devs haven't tried at all. I've already mentioned that skills in this game behave like human beings, and just like every human, they can be wrong. A successful skill check doesn't always guarantee the best outcome, so sometimes it's better to go with the flow. Some of those failed checks are absolutely hilarious and were one of the best moments of the game for me. But again, developers didn't go far enough with this idea. The majority of situations can be resolved only with a successful role, or you'll be simply locked out from progressing further. 
To improve your chances, you can level up required skills or use items and different clauses in order to get a stats bonus. But the more items you are getting, the more inventory management becomes a pain in the ass. In Discoalism, there are 8 types of clauses that you can wear, but inventory has no filters to quickly find the items with bonuses that you need. So, unless you have a perfect memory, every time you'll need to max out a skill, you'll have to check and rearrange all those clauses manually. Instead of enjoying the dialogues and getting dressed as you want, this collision motivates you to wear whatever crap gives you the best stats and abuse saves coming to pass through RNG mechanics. There is also such a thing as the Thought Cabinet, which is another tool that helps you to shape your character. By making choices in dialogues, you can unlock different thoughts that you can research later in order to get permanent bonuses. Some of them are common with the downsides, and there is a limited amount of finished thoughts that you can keep in your brain at once. It's an interesting concept, but the problem is you don't know what bonuses you will get from the thought before finishing it. And the only way to remove the finished thought is to use a skill point which you would rather spend on something else. Instead of experimenting with new thoughts, it's more convenient to check the guides on the internet before researching them, so you won't waste skill points on something that you don't need. I don't think it's a good design when you have to look for the info outside of the game in order to avoid getting punished for making a blind choice. Reading is basically the whole gameplay of Disco Elysium. There's a few combat scenes, but they all handle through the dialogue choices. Outside of the dialogues, you explore the levels and occasionally loot crates that are containing money and stuff. Money is used to pay for your hotel room and buy useful items from different vendors, but overall in this game there are not many ways you can spend it on. All locations in Disco Elysium are incredibly detailed and beautiful. The whole game looks like a painting that came to life. By interacting with the environment, you can learn a lot about the history of this world. Unfortunately, the map in this game is not as big as I hoped it would be, so you won't be able to see most of the stuff that is mentioned in dialogues. Soon you'll start to often run around the same places in order to talk with the character on the other side of the map. I had a lot of fun exploring the levels for the first time, but lack of the fast travel option has become really noticeable at the final stages of the game. Speaking about final stages, Discoalism did one of the worst things that an RPG game can do. After reaching a specific point in the storyline, without a warning, it cancelled some of my ongoing side quests. Yeah, maybe I should have realized on my own that going to the murderous hideout might be an important moment, but shortly after this, this collision gives you a warning before the final point of no return. So what was the problem with giving the same warning in this situation as well? Not to mention that some of the side quests and skill checks were still listed in the journal, even though it was impossible to complete them after that moment. So yeah, my advice for you is to ignore the main storyline before completing all available side quests. The sound design is a mixed bag as well. The music fits the mood of this game perfectly, but there are simply not enough tracks for the 30 hours of the gameplay. The voice acting is rare and very inconsistent. It sounds like some of the actors were extremely bored while reading their lines. Usually characters just briefly say a few words, and after that you'll spend most of the game in silence, only hearing occasional blips of skill checks and the clock. It was not a big issue for me personally, but considering how much time you spent in dialogues, I can see that some people might not like this minimalistic audio design. After all this criticism, it may sound that I hated the game, but it's not true. I've noticed that people tend to notice only negatives, but I've put the word masterpiece in the title for a reason. I simply can't talk in detail about the strongest point of this coalition without spoiling important stuff for you. It's a very emotional journey, with a lot of unexpected twists and memorable moments, and you should experience it on your own. You've probably heard about all the praise that this game has received in the 
past months, and I mostly agree with it. I just feel that Disco Elysium could have been something more than this, something that will be perfect both in terms of the narrative and the gameplay. Unfortunately, that's not the case, so if you won't get hooked by its story, then you are not going to enjoy this game, simple as that. Performance-wise, I haven't experienced any issues with Disco Elysium. There are not many available settings, but in my case the frame rate was always staying above 60 at 4040p resolution. The studio continues to update and optimize the game, and in the recent patch they even lowered minimum requirements. The only technical issue that I have with Disco Elysium is the lack of exclusive full screen. The game supports only borderless full screens, so you won't be able to use down sampling. Worth mentioning that recently it was announced that Disco Elysium will receive new localizations soon, so more people will be able to enjoy it. It's great that developers keep listening to the fans and working with their community, so hopefully they'll hear my feedback and take notes as well. As someone who loves playing story-driven games, I've enjoyed Disco Elysium a lot. Yeah, developers did a few disappointing missteps in terms of game design, but I still highly recommend you to give this game a chance, in case if you still haven't done that. This studio deserves to get more money, so they'll have a bigger budget to fully realize the potential of their crazy ideas. I wonder if it's going to be another detective story in the same universe, or maybe something completely new. In any case, I'm looking forward to what's coming next from those guys. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more.